So what we see in Central Europe, the oil price has on the electricity market not really an impact anymore. That's a good, that's a good news. The bad news is um, that of course the, the um, fur further installation of renewables, especially in a country like Germany, in our grid region, we have already 40% of the consumption, I mentioned that already yesterday, covered by renewable energies, that has an impact on the electricity price causing very low electricity prices, which create some trouble in the overall market design. That is one of the questions that need to be addressed in the near future. What's the right market design to really overcome that? It's important for the renewables on the one side, but it's also important for the complementary power plants that we will need in the next years. Could you just, could you just tease that out a little bit more and um, talk about the sorts of challenges that you face as a grid operator when, for example, uh, you suddenly have to balance a huge amount of variable power. What, what actually happens? I mean, it, surely sometimes you've got a very short period of time to come up with a massive amount of electricity somewhere. Actually, the good thing is when you start such a development, what we learned is it does not play any role for the overall system. So the first 10% of renewable you can integrate just by ignoring them. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> they, have, they, they have no impact on the system. Actually, I told that yesterday when I was a young engineer and started in the energy business, everybody believed it's not possible to integrate more than 5%. I would say nowadays what I learned, what is the main challenge in the first 10% that you install and, and integrate in a, in, in a country is the change in the mindset. It's up here and not a technical problem. It's a, it's a mindset problem. What is important at that stage is that you start to prepare for the next phase. What does it mean concrete? You have to learn to get the right forecast. In the beginning we had a lot of trouble with wind and solar forecasts and they were not very accurate. Nowadays we have over a year an and, and, and average um, a mistake, forecast mistake of not more than 2%, which is nothing on the wind power side. On the solar side, we have not reached that yet. So it's learning about, it's starting to learn how to build up the needed IT tools to integrate them. But then you come in the second phase, and our experience, it will be different in some other region, whether you are an island or whether you are a bigger market, but in, in Central Europe, um, when you came in the second phase, I would call it the phase where the renewables become a substantial source in the energy mix. That's something between 10 and 30 percent. Then forecasting is one of the essential, essential issues. You have to have the right forecast. To give you an example, last year we had in Germany the situation that in the evening before, where all the renewable energies is sold on the uh, day ahead market, fully sold, there was a forecast of 18,000 megawatts, 18,000 megawatt of PV for the next day. And it was fully sold and the conventional plant, plants learned, okay, we cannot sell this energy because it's renewable. They have planned to cool down their power plants and not to be in operation. But the next morning we had to learn that there, overnight there was a high fog layer over all Germany, which is not very often the case. <laughs> And it did not disappear as planned by the forecast. Um, <laughs> so the result was that we had up to 9,000 megawatts less energy from the renewables, from the photovoltaic coming into the system than planned before. We understood this problem in our control center two hours before retime. So we had two hours time to find 8,000 or 9,000 megawatt uh, uh, capacity <laughs> to come into the system. So that shows um, in this, uh, we managed it, so it was, what, what we had no problem in Europe. Time? What the reason why you are still sitting here. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm still sitting in this. <laughs> but, but, but why do I mention this? In this, when, when you're coming into this phase, renewables 10 to 30%, there it becomes substantial, but you still have time to improve these already developed systems. Forecast systems that are integrated in the real-time IT, all this stuff. And you have to think about integrating the renewables also in the market. That has to start also already in this range. And you have to think about integrating the renewables into the ancillary services. What does that mean? The renewables, they can play a role to stabilize the overall system. To give you once again there an example, when we have big storms 
we sometimes lose lines in some directions, more in the US and in Europe because we are meshed to it. Then the main problem and the technical problem in the grid system is to keep the voltage level in the region stable. Renewables are perfect. Windmills, when there is a lot of wind, are perfect for grid stabilization and stabilization of the voltage level. We have included them since one year in Germany, the first ones. But I can tell you the first storms that we had last year, we managed perfectly and they did exactly what expected. And then it's now the third phase where we are slowly coming in. It's a phase where the renewables play a dominant role, above 30%. In our grid region, 40%, overall in Germany, we are at 28%. And then we have to think about, step by step, a full market integration, otherwise it will not work, otherwise we have a regulated generation, that's not the future. And then, and then it starts where we have to think, at least in the lesson to be made in Central Europe, where we have to think about flexibility. Till then, we don't need any additional flexibility. We need then, as an additional flexibility element, the cheapest one, that is grid extension, connecting areas, as you mentioned it already, but step by step also demand response, demand side management, flexible complementary uh, power plants and at the end storage. But this is not an issue for day one, it's an issue when you have 30% or more in the system. Then it's a point where you really need flexibility.